What's going on filmmakers? Today is a very exciting day because Canon just dropped their specs to the Canon R5 camera that is under development right now. I myself am a Sony shooter. I've been shooting Sony for the past three or four years. Before that, I was shooting Nikon, so I've never actually been a part of the Canon ecosystem. But the R5 is probably the only camera that's ever happened that really gets me stoked about Canon and that would make me consider switching. Some of these video specs are actually crazy, so I'm gonna dive into them right now. Let's take a look. Starting it off with 8K video. 8K seems actually insane. It's gonna shoot up to 30 frames per second. It's gonna be raw 8K as well, or have the ability to shoot raw. It's gonna be non-cropped. Autofocus is still gonna be good, and it's all gonna be shooting internally as well in a 422 10-bit codec. This seems absolutely mind-blogging. I don't know how some of the cinema cameras and 1DX doesn't have the 8K video feature. So for them putting it into this camera seems insane but it's a very cool feature. I don't know how usable it actually is. If you're shooting an 8K interview, you could literally crop in from a wide shot, super, super tight, um, or just do it for 8K sort of TV. Our TVs and monitors still aren't up to 8K standard yet. Um, I think there's only a couple TVs and monitors out there, so I think 8K, as cool as it is, it's not gonna be as useful, and the file sizes are gonna be absolutely insane. Um, the amount of hard drive space and memory card space that you're gonna need and then computer power to edit 8K is crazy. Um, so it's a cool feature, but I don't think a lot of people are actually gonna use it. Jumping to 4K though, I think this is where the gold is. 4K up to 120 frames per second, both internal and external recording, non-cropped, which is a huge feature. Canon has always had a reputation of cropping in the video um, when you're shooting in 4K. Having the ability to do 4K 120, I think is actually the goal. You have high quality and then you have slow motion as well. I've been asking Sony for so long to put 4K 60 in a camera. I think that's a happy medium between having decent file sizes, having extra resolution, and then the ability to slow down and post as well. So for Canon to go 4K 120, I think that's gonna be awesome. No one can complain about 4K 120. They went above and beyond what people are expecting. So that is very cool. Jumping down to raw video, as I said before, 8K raw is gonna be cool. I don't know how useful it's gonna be. Um, there might be a record limit. That is one thing that people are guessing. There has to be a record limit. So I think it's gonna be 30 seconds, maybe. There's just so much data to pump into a card. Um, it's not gonna be an extended period of time, but that's okay. It has its uses, um, and a lot of people probably won't end up using that feature. IBIS as well, which is super cool. Sony has had five axis IBIS for a very long time in their cameras. I think it's awesome when you're shooting on stabilized lenses or even with a gimbal, it helps smooth out your shots. Um, so that's awesome that Canon is doing that as well. For the card slots, they're doing two card slots. One is gonna be a CFast Express card, which is awesome. They are super fast, but they're also ridiculously expensive. The other card is just gonna be a SD UHS-2 card, which is good. I'm not sure how they're gonna do the redundancy. Um, with Sony, it's awesome because you can have two cards recording at the same the same thing at the same time for photo and for video. I'm not sure how Canon is going to do this with using one CFast card and one SD card, so we will see what happens there. For the price, we still don't know yet what the price is going to be. Jared Poland had said it's going to be around $3,500, which seems way too low for a camera with these specs in it. I think competing with a C500 that is full frame, shoots 4K 120, um, obviously has many more features and stuff, but having that for $3,500 is a steal of a deal. And I think any Sony shooter or Nikon shooter will really consider jumping to the Canon R5 if they can release it for $3,500. I personally don't think that is possible to release a camera with these specs for that cheap of a price. I think it's more in the $5,000 range, closer to the 1DX Mark III, but we'll never know. We will see what happens. I think it's really interesting that they're dropping this and dropping the development because now it's Sony's turn to drop the A7S III. We still don't know any specs about that camera yet. Um, hopefully Sony is gonna release something soon, but I think now that Canon has dropped these specs, now the battle's on with Sony and that Sony has to drop some specs on the A7S III as well. And it needs to compete, or I think a lot of Sony shooters are gonna be jumping back to Canon. So we will see what happens. If you are super excited about this camera, leave a comment down below and let me know what you think about the new Canon R5. I think it's pretty crazy. I'm definitely considering getting it. It'll be price dependent and we will see what Sony comes out with. That's all I have for today. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you think. Take care, see you next time, peace.